For the first time in almost two months, Vilma can hold her 11-year-old son. The boy, seeking asylum from Guatemala with his mother, was one of over 2,500 children taken from their parents by the Trump administration since April. Nearly four months later, hundreds like him remain in custody. The President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. It began at an event on tax reform when the president made clear something else was on his mind. We cannot let people enter our country. We have no idea who they are, what they do, where they came from. The next day, the Department of Justice unveiled Zero Tolerance, its new policy at the U.S.-Mexico border. Zero Tolerance was basically the mechanism that the government used to separate these families. News coming in just now that so far um, the government has separated 2,000 kids from their parents. It took weeks for the government to even release numbers. Then came the first government images of kids behind chain link fences and the first sounds of children wailing for their parents. <laughs> More than a hundred of those taken from their parents were younger than five. Some were just babies. Well, greetings, everyone. And Members so of Congress much, uh, raced to the border. They call it zero tolerance, but a better name for it is zero humanity, and there's zero logic to this policy. Reporters were given tours of detention centers, but they were not allowed to talk to separated kids or parents. So lawyers told their stories. I'm looking in their eyes and I see the tears coming down their face and they're asking me, please help me find my child. And I don't, I don't have an answer for them. They say, where is my child? And I say, I don't know. The government was used to tracking family units or unaccompanied alien children, but not a new category of separated families. They called them deleted family units. But when they sent those lists to Health and Human Services, there was no way to enter them into the agency's databases. The administration told families that if they wanted to stay with their children, they should apply for asylum at the ports of entry. But across the border, asylum seekers were being turned away. At a shelter in Reynosa, a Honduran woman who introduced herself as Lorena said she had no choice left but to cross illegally. Some parents were deported without their children. The Washington Post was with this father in rural El Salvador when he got his first call from his six-year-old daughter. He didn't know where in the U.S. she was being held. Uh -huh. As political pressure built, Trump relented, signing an executive order to end his own policy of family separations. But when a court ordered the administration to reunite the families already torn apart, there was no plan to fall back on. It was like a giant jigsaw puzzle that had to be put together under a ticking clock set by this court. And the fact that they didn't have a single database with all of these parents and a clear way to put them back together impeded the process. Sparsely at first, then all at once, there were reunions. Buenaventura Martin hadn't seen her seven-year-old daughter in two months. The government is now scrambling to reunite the remaining families. It's been a mess. We've heard from our clients and their attorneys reunifications happening in the parking lot, that an office building was, uh, you know, it's now a makeshift place for kids to sleep overnight while their parents are released. At the Catholic Charities Shelter in McAllen, Texas, Staffers help reunified families figure out their next steps. The first thing that we do is welcome them and make them really rejoice with them because they are together. We will then have staff and volunteers taking down their information so that we can start calling their family members and so they could start uh, connecting them with them and making plans. From there, the families are then taken to the bus or to the airport 
and off they go. Sa'ed doesn't know if he'll be allowed to stay in the United States, but he's with his son again after two months apart. And right now, that's all that matters. Fue emocionante ya el momento que ya te dicen ya vente por aquí que ya vas a ver tu hijo. Eh, no había manera. Ese día antes había soñado de que ya lo miraba ahí jugando béisbol y eh, cuando ya lo vi pues fui a abrazarlo con gran emoción a pedirle a Dios que nunca nos vuelvan a separar. <laughs>